Hello, third grade. Today's lesson is for May 6th, Beautiful Feet, found on pages 360 to 366. But before you open up your book, let's go ahead and look at our vocabulary for the day. Go ahead and read number one through six. You can pause the video and read that on your own and use the context clues to figure out what the underlined words mean. All right, good job reading there. <clears throat> and now we can read them together. Number one, our family members traveled in a caravan of three cars when we went to the beach. So using the other words in the sentence for context clues, you should be pretending that you are riding in one of those three cars and you're headed to the beach. Oh, wouldn't you like to be going there right now? And so whenever you're going somewhere with say three cars following each other, you can say that you are caravanning. Sometimes people traveled with camels and they were in a caravan. Any way that you travel, a whole group of people together with different vehicles is a caravan. Number two, a knock at the door interrupted the meeting. So you should be picturing yourself having a meeting. You're talking, discussing things, making decisions, and there's a knock at the door. It's gonna cause everybody to stop, and turn to the door. It interrupts what you're doing in the meeting. It kind of stops things. Number three, the artist placed the parchment over the shapes and traced them. Hmm. Have you ever put something over top of another piece of paper or design and traced it? I actually remember us doing this with some Chinese characters. You had to put the piece of paper on top and paint what you could see underneath. So parchment, I'm thinking it must be a special kind of paper. Number four, pass. The hikers took the shortest route through the pass between the mountains. So picture that you're in the mountains and you're hiking and you want to find the shortest way to get through the mountains and so you go through a pass. I'm thinking it must be some kind of trail, right? A way to get through. Number five, preparations. Preparations for a big party can take a long time. Preparations. Hmm. Have you ever had a big party? You've had in our classroom or maybe your birthday party. Prepare, you should notice that root word in preparations, prepare. All the things that you have to do to prepare for that big party, it can take a long time, especially if you wanna have like a water balloon fight. If you're filling up the balloons the old fashioned way, that takes a long time just doing that. Number six, urged. Can you say that word? Urged. The G has a soft J sound, urged. The salesman urged the gentleman <clears throat> to buy the newest phone. So you have two men here, a salesman trying to sell something is urging the gentleman to buy the newest phone. What do you think he's doing? He's trying to get him to buy it. He's trying to persuade him to buy it. He's urging him to do it. All right. Okay, so go ahead and open up your book to page 360 so we can go ahead and get started. Once you, you could pause the video until you get there. On page 360, you're gonna see this Venn diagram. I want you to go ahead and get this worksheet. I'm pretty sure I gave it to you. Yours is probably black and white. Get this worksheet out. What is this type of graphic organizer called? A Venn diagram. Do you remember our song for Venn diagram? Venn diagrams organize your thoughts each day. In the middle, what do we put in the middle? What's the same, alike, two, and then on the outside is how they are different. How, and you'd use words like however, un, unlike. Um, so look at the titles of our two circles. We have a yellow circle and a blue circle. The title of the blue circle, it says Ming Chu, and there's a girl there. And then Ming Chu's husband. Oh, I guess she's not a girl, she's a woman. So Ming Chu and the blue and yellow, Ming Chu's husband. So what do you think we're gonna be doing with this Venn diagram? 
That's right. We're going to be comparing and contrasting Ming Chu and Ming Chu's husband. In the middle, we're going to compare how are they the same? How are they both the same and alike? And then in the outer parts, how are they different? Okay, so look at page 360. I'm going to read that to you. Character comparisons. Stories may have many different characters. Sometimes characters are alike and sometimes they are different. A Venn diagram helps organize information to show how characters are alike and how they are different. So this is one thing we're gonna be thinking about as we read our story. How is Ming Chu? Who, what is she like? What is her character like? And then we're going to compare her to Ming Chu's husband. All right, that's one thing that we'll do. Now let's look at page 361. I'm going to read, pause the video and read that um, to yourself silently first, okay? All right. Beautiful Feet, a true story retold by Ruth Braille, illustrated by Gabor Utomo. So what did Gabor Utomo do? Drew the pictures. Right? You are drawing illustrations in your coronavirus journal every day. Hopefully, don't forget to do that each day so that you can get up to your 20 days of journaling. And Okay, so the age-old custom of binding feet to make them beautiful causes this Chinese lady to appreciate the Bible's description of beautiful feet. Her tale is an adaptation of a true story that has often been told to encourage others in faithful witnessing. A tale or a story. You know what I'm thinking of right away? It's talking about binding feet and a Chinese lady. Who are you thinking about that we've read about? I'm thinking about Gladys Elward, how she was an inspector to get people to stop doing this very practice that we're gonna read, read about. And look at those shoes. Look at those beautiful um, Chinese shoes. Okay, I'm going to have you go ahead and start reading here in just a moment. And before I have you start reading, I want to show you this picture. Look at this picture. This is a picture. These aren't girls. These aren't little girls with their little feet. These are women. Look at how small their feet look. Because like we learned about with Gladys Elward, a woman's foot was from the time that they were a baby, the mother would start wrapping their foot up so that it would not grow into a normal foot. It would stay very small. And we're gonna learn more and kind of get an understanding of Chinese culture and why this was important to them in their culture. While you start reading, I'm gonna have you have two questions. And you'll see the questions on the bottom of 361. Think as you read. You wanna be asking yourself, who has beautiful feet? So I want you to find the answer to that as you read. Who has beautiful feet? And in what ways are feet beautiful? In what ways are feet beautiful? And who has beautiful feet? After I tell you the pages, you'll pause the video and read silently, and then you'll turn it back on for some questions. I want you to read page 362 through 364, that's three pages. Um, go ahead and pause the video and come back for some questions. All right, good job reading, very good. So uh, here we are, go ahead and turn back to page 362. The title of this section is what? A mission school. Do you remember what a mission is? We've learned that word in so many different of our story, stories and in history. I keep thinking about the Alamo, how we learned at the Alamo, where that um, battle was. The Alamo was originally a Spanish mission, a building that was used by missionaries to spread the gospel. So here we are at the mission school. Uh, right there on the top of the page, it says, tired from packing, Ming Chu sat down on the porch of the mission school. So why does Ming Chu sit down on the porch of the mission school. Look at that text and you tell me why she sat down. Right, she was tired from packing. Hmm, I wonder what she's gonna be packing. While you read, did you find the answer to this question? Who has beautiful feet? 
while you read, did you find the answer to this question? In what ways are feet beautiful? Hmm. Let's see. In the third paragraph, find the third paragraph, the third indentation. Why does the little girl come running to Ming Chu? Find that answer. Right, because she was chasing a ball. All right, now let's see. How does Ming Chu follow the running child? Do you see that? Where are the words that the author uses to tell you how she followed the running child? But the child's all running. And what does it say about Ming Chu? She, the last paragraph, you found the last paragraph? Ming Chu followed the running child, moving slowly and carefully in her tiny shoes. Mm. You have something about Ming Chu that you can write in your Venn diagram, something that you have learned, and we can guess that it's going to be something different from a man, Ming Chu's husband. What will you write in the blue part of this Venn diagram? I would write, she has tiny feet and she walks slowly and carefully. You could pause and rewind and um, get that information of what to fill in in the Venn diagram. Now look at page 363. In what ways are the two men special to Ming Chu? First of all, what two men are we talking about in that first paragraph? Who is it? One was the missionary and the other was a young Chinese man. So in what ways were these two men special to Ming Chu? What does the author tell you in the text? That's right, the missionary has been like a father to Ming Chu and she's going to marry this young Chinese man. So what do you think his name is? Well, we don't know yet but he is on our Venn diagram as Ming Chu's husband. So here he is, our first introduction to him. I haven't learned anything yet myself to put in that Venn diagram on these two pages so far. Let's see, another question on page 363. Why will Ming Chu not be at the mission school the next day? Look at one, two, three, four, five, the fifth paragraph. What does it say? Why will she not be at the mission school the next day? Well, the missionary said, you are returning home to prepare for your wedding. She won't be there because she's going home to prepare for her wedding. Last question for 363. How did Ming Chu, Ming Chu and her young man hear the gospel? How did they hear the gospel? The missionary brought it to them, right? We've learned a lot about missionaries. Missionaries have a calling to share the gospel. Remember when we read about Gladys Alward? Do you still have your wordless book at home? We're gonna talk about that more and you're gonna be, at the end of these three days, you're gonna be writing a letter to somebody and sharing the gospel. Maybe you could get out your wordless book and practice and see if you can remember all the points that you share to tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay, and turn to page 364. So how does Ming Chu travel to her home, right? She's about to go home and prepare for her wedding. How does she travel there? Look at the first paragraph and look at the picture. What is that called that she's traveling in? Do you see the word? It's called sedan chair. Can you say that? sedan chair. Some of your parents have vehicles that are sedans. They're called sedans. It's the size of the vehicle that they are, a four-door car. That's a larger one, but uh, a sedan chair is what you see in there. I'm going to show you some pictures, some other pictures. I'm going to get me out of your way. So sedan, sedan chairs, very important people would be carried around in sedan chairs like the Mandarin in the story of Gladys Elward, he rode in the sedan chair. And then a lot of women would ride in the sedan chair. Here's another one. Looks like a, a young lady riding in that sedan, sedan chair. Now, why do you think, oh, why do you think Ming Chu 
needed to ride in a sedan chair. I think she really needed to. Why do you think she needed to? Hmm. Well, do you remember what it said about how she was chasing after, after that little girl who was running with the ball? She had to walk slowly and carefully. Look back at your Venn diagram. You learned that about her character. She has tiny feet and she had to walk slowly and carefully. All right, at this time, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and you're going to read page 365 and 366. Come back on for some more questions. Oh, before you do that, I want you to ask yourself this. Find out what Ming Chu and her family do to prepare for her wedding. So you're gonna to continue to ask yourself who has beautiful feet and ask yourself, what does Ming Chu and her family do to prepare for her wedding? Okay. All right, good job reading, good job. So page 365. Do you think that Ming Chu's caravan had a diff will have a difficult trip? Look at page 365. Will they have a difficult trip? Look at the first paragraph. Where does it say they're traveling? They're traveling up the mountains. That is going to be a very difficult trip. They are out in the wilderness. Here's a little trail you can see behind me here. They're out in the wilderness in China, and they're going to be traveling up through the mountains. It is going to be a difficult trip. How long was the trip to Ming Chu's village? What did the author say? Find the words. You might not know the exact, but what words did they use to tell you how long the trip would be to Ming Chu's village? Well, look at paragraph number two. What does it say? Days later the caravan reached Ming Chu's village. So at least several days, that's what we know. I wanna ask you a question. Ming Chu's family, do you think her family is rich or poor? Look at all the evidence in the text to answer your question. Is she rich or poor? Let's see. They have a gate at their house. There's a servant who takes her to her parents. And then they hire somebody to make the dress for her wedding. I think she's rich. I think her family is rich. So what could you write for Ming Chu? Now use a pencil because we might find out later that Ming Chu's husband is the same. But for now, put it in Ming Chu's blue part of her circle, that her family is rich. You could pause and, and write that in there. Now look at where it says, one, two, third paragraph. It says, Ming Chu's mother sent for the tailor. Soon, material was spread across the room in a silken rainbow of bright colors. Why is her, why are they using bright colors for her wedding dress? In our country, what do people usually use for their wedding dress? White. And that's the main culture here in the United States. Not everybody does, but that's the main culture. But here you're learning that in the Chinese culture, wedding dresses are brightly colored. Now look at page 366. How do Ming Chu's tiny feet cause her to be different from the little girl at the mission school? What was she saying on this page? How is she different from the little girl at the mission school? Look at the third paragraph. The author says Ming Chu's thinking, and she's thinking what freedom the children had whose feet were not bound. So Ming Chu cannot run freely like the little girl. She can't do that. I want you to take another look at these shoes here. Look at how tiny their feet are. But do you see kind of where the feet are bulging a little bit? Now I want you to look at these feet behind me. This is a comparison. Which feet do yours look like? Yeah, mine look like this. 
But over here, this is a picture of what feet look when, like when they are bound. Now we looked at pictures of these when we were studying glass L-word. So from the time they're babies, their mothers take, um, you could picture duct tape, but it's not duct tape. It's like a, a bandage that they wrap around their feet and keep it all squished in. So it grows just like that, all squished up in really tiny. So tiny that it can fit into these kinds of shoes. Look at all these beautiful shoes behind here. Mm -hmm. um, did Ming Chu choose to have her feet bound? Did she choose that? No, she did not. It was done to her when she was just an infant. Uh, how do you, or why do you think her mother did that to her? Why did her mother do that? Well, it's part of a different culture than what we're used to. In the Chinese culture, what was considered beautiful? Little feet. Little feet were considered beautiful. Also, if you were wealthy, that's what you did. It was a sign of wealth and beauty in the Chinese culture. This foot practice was banned in 1912. And when Gladys Elward was in China, that was the 1930s. And the Mandarin hired her to be a foot inspector. So even 20 years later, they were still having a hard time getting people to stop binding their feet. And there are still people alive today in Southern China, really old women, older women, elderly women who are still alive who had their feet bound. All right, last thing here. How do you think Ming Chu might feel about having bound feet? What do you think she feels about it? What do you think? Well, maybe she's a pleased, pleased with all the attention that she gets, right? People think her feet are so beautiful. Or maybe she's angry that she can't run around like the other girl. What did you think? Hmm? And who has beautiful feet? Well, we're seeing that Ming Chu has beautiful feet. So you could write that on your Venn diagram as well. Ming Chu has beautiful feet. Okay, just a couple questions to review those five pages that you just read. According to Chinese culture, what makes Ming Chu's feet beautiful? They're the smallest in the village. That's why they're so beautiful. How do Ming Chu's feet differ from other people's feet? Right, her, since her feet were bound, she cannot run. She needed to ride in that sedan chair and be carried around so that she wouldn't have so much pain when she was walking. How do you think Ming Chu might feel about having bound feet? Well, we just discussed that, so. We're good with that. All right, your worksheet today is a Venn diagram. It's not about this story, Beautiful Feet. It's about your knowledge of how to use a Venn diagram. So if you remember from this Venn diagram, what gets written in the middle? Both circles meet in the middle. It's where they're the same. They're both the same. How they're the same. You'd say, um, he has small feet too. Well, we don't know that, probably doesn't, because the culture was to bind the women's feet. And then on the outside, you have only Ming Chu or only Ming Chu's husbands, how they are different. You're gonna have a list of what Ming Chu is like and a list of what Ming Chu's husband is like. And so on your worksheet, you're gonna be co um, comparing clouds. All right, good job. A third grade, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Do a great job on your worksheet. We only have one week left to go, and I'm very excited for you. Bye-bye. I love you, and I miss you.